Hi guys, Ryan here from Elite Almost Diagnostics. Got a real quick video for you today. Um, we have a Renault Capture in the workshop with a engine. Um, I've just, so it's a Renault Capture, as you can see. Uh, the customer's plane is that the engine light's on. Um, we have the ignition on at the moment, but when you start it, the engine light is on. Um, and we have a permanent code in there. We've connected up the old towel and I've scanned the car already. So we'll read the codes. So we've got a turbo pressure sensor circuit code, uh, below threshold and an implausible signal code. Okay, quite straightforward. Um, they won't clear, so we'll try and clear them. So it's permanent DTC. So we'll try and clear them now. Successfully erased, it's great. Let's see if they've actually cleared. No fault codes, let's check again. No, so it's come straight back. Okay, so we'll go out of there. Let's check our live data, see if we can actually see anything that's implausible. So all signals. Uh, let's go down to a search pressure, because that's what we're after. I've got to get a no call in a minute, because this Renault keeps switching the ignition off on its own. Because it has electronic ignition. As you can see, we've got no data now, so let's just quickly cycle the ignition again. If anyone knows how to keep these awake when you're working on them, let me know, that'd be great. Uh, so obviously the key card's in, I've tried putting the hazards on and I've also tried putting the seatbelt on, and that still doesn't work. Um, so let's grab the data again. So we wanted pressure, uh, manifold pressure, which is there, um, and uh, what else we need? Rough turbocharging pressure. Uh, what else we got on there? Boost pressure reference. Boost pressure, atmospheric pressure. So let's have a look at them. So as you can see, they're all about a thousand millibar, which is what they should be at the moment, um, without the engine running, uh, just key on. So they actually look coherent. So it doesn't look like we have an issue there. However, we've got permanent DTC being set for this fault, um, for the pressure sensor. So what we need to do is let's just see if we start it up, whether they change or whether they are static and they do not change. So let's do that. I'll start it up for you quickly. Ooh. Okay, so there we go. She's running. If we monitor boost pressure, that one there, and manifold pressure. Give it a rev. As you can see, they are moving as I rev the engine, quite consistent with each other, so you know, what's going on? Um, so we'll switch that off, switch the ignition back on again. Okay, so as you can see, they're actually working, working fine. So why is it set on the DTC? Well, Renault is often used to um, like to use substitute values. So when there's an issue with the car uh, or a system or a circuit, they will use values or show scan data that isn't actual physical live data. So what I mean is usually we will go into EOBD, check that information in EOBD, and then you find the information is actually in incorrect in the, in the uh, system of the ECU side that the manufacturers use, not EOBD. So let's go into EOBD and check it in EOBD and see what it says. So go out of there. Let's go into EOBD. Usually in EOBD, it would give us correct information and data so we can obviously diagnose the vehicle. However, in this car, this is not the case. So let's go into diesel. Uh, let's select OK. Let's go into, let's read the DTCs. So we've got a bar pressure sensor, correlation code again, and another one below it. Okay, let's go into live data. Let's check uh, our ma manifold pressure, see what it says in here, see if it's the same as it was in manufacturer specific information. So 
as we can see, we've got the borrow and we've got the map sensor. We'll show them to. As you can see, the manifold pressure in the OBD is 15 kPa. Barometric is 102. These should match. So as you can see, we have an inconsistency between these two figures. The intake manifold pressure should match this one. So we have an issue, okay? We didn't see that in the, uh, the scan data on the previous, um, in, in manufacturer specific because of the fact that that's how they do things, that's how they write the software. But we can see it here, so intake manifold pressure, so can we use this data is the question. We should be able to. So if we start it up, let's see if it changes. So we graph this. All right, so we'll start her up. Read a 13 kPa. Give it a rev. Not a whole lot is really changing. 13, 14 kPa, so nothing really. So we'll switch it off. We'll switch the ignition on. So that's strange. So do we have a sensor fault or do we have a wiring fault is the question. So we're probed in here. That's the signal wire to the computer. And we're reading 1.65 volts. Now, I would expect this reading 1.65 volts, 14 kPa, to be a lot higher or a lot less than that, 14 kPa. I'd expect that voltage to either read zero or five volts for that to be that low. So the fact that the signal wire is reading 1.65 volts, and we only have 14 kPa on the scan data, and it doesn't change a huge amount when we rev it, is a little bit concerning. So what I want to do is if we grab the multimeter, I'll put it in the windscreen, like that. I'll take you with me. What we're going to do is going to start up and rev it. Again, all we're doing is just checking the data is coherent with what we're testing. So we make sure that everything is right. So we're reading 1.65 volts there. I'll start it up. We're reading 1.63. And as you can see, the voltage is changing fairly drastically. So I'd expect a lot more of a change in that live data in EOBD. Okay, so do we have, we can see the signal, the sensor's working, it's sending out a signal to the computer, um, which increases with RPM. So do we have a wiring fault or do we have a computer fault? Is the question I would ask. Because we can obviously see a physical change when the vehicle's being revved. However, the computer itself is only seeing a very small number, 15 kPa. So again, do we have a wiring fault or do we have a computer fault? Now, luckily enough, uh, I've really looked at this car. It does actually have a faulty sensor, okay? It's just a faulty map sensor. The voltage is reading too high. However, what's interesting is that the EOB data, EOBD data, and the actual manufacturer-specific data isn't really much help. So again, 15 kPa. If we use the AutoSim Pro, this is a test. I want to send out four and a half volts down the signal wire to the engine computer just over there. And I want to see what happens to the manifold pressure. We should see a huge change in this data here. So we're going to do that. So as you can see, we're set at four and a half volts. We're currently on. So I'm going to grab this and jump it into the back of there. As you can see now, reading 4.4 volts on the multimeter. But in the OBD, the data has not changed. So definitely one to look out for, guys. It nearly caught me out. So how I diagnosed this car, luckily enough using the AutoSim Pro, uh, I went back. Went back into manufacturer specific because what he was finding was, the, um, which was a big hint, take me back in the OBD, I'll show you quickly, was that the, um, the DTC data was actually changing, but the actual, inf the actual live data wasn't. So the DTC fault codes was giving me a circuit high code and a circuit low code when I was manipulating the voltage. But the actual information, i.e. the live scan data, didn't change in EOBD or manufacturer specific uh, in correlation with what I was actually doing. Uh, so let's clear that. So 
So we've got a correlation code again. So what I'll do now is we'll increase that to five volts. So we're outputting five volts. And then we'll go back and we'll read the codes again. So as you can see, we now have a circuit high code. So in theory, if that data isn't changed, which I don't think it will be, intake manifold pressure, still reading 15 kPa, has not moved, but our voltage is changing. So do we have a faulty computer? Do we have a faulty sensor? Do we have faulty wiring? The fault of this vehicle is it has a faulty sensor. The reason I know that is because now the computer is capable of setting a circuit to high code and the DTC has changed. So the information the computer is seeing must be, it must be seeing a change in voltage, otherwise it wouldn't be able to use its own diagnosis and determine that the voltage is too high or too low. But live data on this particular vehicle is not going to help. Intake manifold pressure, 15 kPa, with five volts being applied to it. And it doesn't matter whether it's 1.6 volts, 1.5 volts, or whatever. Okay, so just to prove that what our issue is here, uh, we'll go back out of there. What the issue with this sensor is, is static, it reads 1.65 volts um, with just the key on, which is too high for this particular vehicle. So we'll go back into uh, manufacturer specific again. Diagnosis control unit, injection. Ah, got no communication because the ignition switched off. Again, if anyone knows how to switch the ignition on on a Renault and leave it on, I've tried the hazards and I've tried the seatbelt and neither of them work. Let me know, that'd be handy. So I know for the future. All right, so we're there, injection. So we're still reading five volts on the signal wire that I'm inputting into that. Read the codes. Uh, and as you can see, again, the, the code has changed from our original code, which was this one, to above threshold. So that's the key here. The ETC criteria is what led me to the sensor being at fault, not the computer and not the wiring. I was concerned to begin with because when I was changing the voltage on the signal wire, the live data was not changing with what I was doing in EOBD. So one to look out for. So what we're going to do here, um, we're going to change the voltage down to one volt, which is what it should be with the key on. One volt there. As you can see, outputting one volt. So we're going to go back and we're going to clear all the DTCs again. Are we sure? Yes. Codes have been cleared. Let's check them. No code, lovely. Let's read them again. No code. Let's read it one more time. No code. Let's read them one more time. And as you can see, guys, no codes. So all it does need is that sensor. As you can see, just to add, this sensor's already been changed for an aftermarket sensor. This has come from local parts. Uh, supplier, as you can see, uh, FAE is the brand. They're just no good. They are literally no good. From the manufacturer, you need to buy genuine sensors from the manufacturer. This is the exact reason why. This is a brand new sensor, just been installed. And the uh, our customer was concerned that they had an issue with the wiring or the computer, which obviously we ruled out using, luckily enough, the AutoSim Pro. Otherwise, we would have been chasing our towers for a long time with this one. Uh, so again, I'll read the codes for you guys, just so you can see. No codes, computer's happy. And we are sending one volt down the signal wire for that manifold pressure sensor. Uh, and the computer's happy with that voltage now. Okay, guys, so just a heads up, give you guys a heads up with regards to the uh, EOBD, EOBD data, um, where that uh, pre pressure reading was not changing, and it was implausible to begin with, to be honest with you, at 15 kPa. But did we, you know, we, we verified the wiring, 
using the actual DTC criteria, not the live data. So once we sent five volts down that wire, we had a high input code come into the computer, um, which told us that the voltage must be getting to the computer and it must be seeing that voltage. Otherwise it would not set that DTC. So yeah, just another interesting one guys. I uh, thought you guys might like that. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.